morning, everyone. You can turn in your Bibles to the book of 1 Peter. <clears throat> First Peter, we've been slowly working our way through that book, the times that I've been preaching here. So we are continuing, we'll finish chapter 1 today. <clears throat> so in, in, uh, in 1 Peter chapter 1, he's, he's first given a, um, the, first, the first 12 verses are a, a, a doctrinal um, set of teachings that he gives us, and then from verse 13 to, uh, to, to the end of the chapter gives us the, our, our response to that. And then as, as we read through, you can see that in, in verse 13 to verse 21, we have our response towards, towards God, that, uh, that vertical relationship, how, how we respond to God in light of all these truths that, uh, that he's, been, he's been teaching. And then in verse 22, to the end of the chapter, we have the, the horizontal relationship between the brethren. And um, so, so we'll read through the chapter. You can see that as we, as we work our, our way through that. So 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. <clears throat> Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would, that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that, not to themselves, but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven." things which angels desire to look into. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, when its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which, by the gospel, was preached to you thus far. Well, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we do come before you now, and Lord, we look to you, and we, we ask that you would be pleased to be among us, that you would send your spirit in a powerful way to be among us this morning as we, as we look at this passage of Scripture. Lord, that you would enable the, the, the preaching of the passage, that you would enable us to, to hear these things and, to, and, to, and that you would apply them to our hearts, Lord, a very practical instruction for life with, uh, with, uh, with the brethren. And I pray that you would 
be pleased to edify your, your, your people here, and I pray that if there are those among us who have, who have not come to the Savior, who are not part of that community of believers in Christ, that, they would, that, they would, that today would be the day that you shine the light into the hearts and that they see the Savior and that they come to him in, in faith and repentance. So Lord, we pray that you be glorified in all that is done here, and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, as I mentioned, this, uh, this passage that we're going to look at today, verses 22 to, uh, to the end of the chapter, verse 25, is dealing with our relationships to others in, the, in, this, in this new community that we are part of. As, uh, as, as um, we're, the, the Bible tells us to, to, to love all, all men, to love our neighbor as ourselves, regardless of their, of their, their status with God. But yet there's a, there's a special application for the people of God, specifically for the, for the, the, the brethren here. So it's a, this, this new life that they have, these, these believers, there's this new life, and it's also, there's, it's new community. If you flip ahead to chapter 4 for a minute, you can see the old community that they were part of, and that, that old way of life. First Peter chapter 4, uh, we can start at, uh, at verse 2 there, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lewdness, lusts, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. So that was their that was their their past life and their past way of of um, of living. Now that they are they're 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 new creatures in Christ, there is a new way uh, a, a new 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 commands for living in this covenant community. Here, so um, you know we've we've all we've all been redeemed by the blood of Christ. We're all in Christ. Now, how do we interact with with one another on that level? So, so the the section breaks down then what I call the the common Christian experience, which is the the, the having purified souls in verse twenty two, uh, verse twenty two a, and then we have the, the 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 command, the imperative, love one another, verse twenty two b, and then the basis for that uh, for that not not only for the command but for the love, the source and the and the basis of that love, having been born again and that's in verse 23 to the end of verse 25 so so the the common christian experience then having having purified your souls or since you have purified your souls here so so the the uh, the word purified here is describing those these these here who have whose whose souls have been purified well this this implies then when uh, the the it, this is this is not a, a a moral purification, not an outward outward change of 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 actions where we purify our outward acts, but it's a purification of of the of the inward. It's not sanctification where our where our lives are becoming conformed to the to to the image of Christ, but rather it is an an inward uh, an inward change, an inward purifying that has happened. So so that obviously implies then that we prior to this purification, we there was a time when we were impure. That, uh, that 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 and, and understanding this is 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 foundational to understanding um, the the all of the Christian truths in in um, in reality. But this this section here as well that that we have we are we are all in 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 sin that we all have sinned. The Bible tells us and and that's and and we sin. Because we're sinners, because we're impure. It's not. It's not the other way around. It's not that we that we're that 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 our our um, our sin makes us sinners. But it's the other way around. Our our the, the fact that we are sinners makes us sin. That's what we call the doctrine of of depravity, where we are we are spiritually Im, impure by by nature. So. So having that that uh, that understanding in our mind of what the Bible is teaching about what the Bible teaches us about unregenerate man this 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 old fallen nature of man it's going to help us to understand the next passage here so that we don't uh, we don't we don't go off in a in a in an Armenian sort of direction um, at all but it keeps us keeps us grounded here so we so we we begin depraved and and uh, and and un and impure so then how do we how do we become become pure how do how are, how are our souls purified and it tells us here in in that you purify your souls in obeying the truth so there, it, there, it's an obedience to the truth that purifies our souls now we need to look at some scripture verses to see what what exactly is going on here as i said we want to we the, a, a passage like this we need to understand the we need to understand our depravity and we need to understand what's going on when we talk about obedience so that we're not left in a um in a in a, in a works-based righteousness a works-based justification here so so you can turn to second thessalonians um chapter one <clears throat> chapter one verse eight
Well, let's uh, let's back up here again um, a little bit here. Um, Okay, verse 7, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So obeying the gospel. What is, what is that? Let's, uh, with, if we can flip back to First Peter, actually, again, if your finger was still there. First Peter, now this uh, chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 17. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God, and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? So, so it's, 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 it's obeying the gospel. What is that? Look at, let's turn to Romans 10 now. We can see very clearly what, what obeying the gospel is. Romans chapter 10, verse 16. But they have not all obeyed, obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, so we can see in this passage, and we have, it's equating obedience and, and believing. So obedience to the gospel and faith in the gospel, that is the, that is the, those are synonymous. Those are the same things there. So, but now we need to... Um, we need to to, to qualify this and to, and to clarify it here, when we talk of obedience, faith as obedience, we're not, we're not, um, we're not talking uh, neonomianism. Neonomianism basically is teaching the, the new law, neonomian means new law, is, is faith. And therefore, our, our faith is given merit, our faith is given credit, whereas where then when, when we exercise faith, that's, the, that's the, 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 the value that God places on our justification. That's not what we're talking here when we speak of obedience and faith being, um, being the, the same thing here. It's, um, so let's, let's, you know, that we're, God's new standard of righteousness and, and new standard for entrance into heaven is not faith. You know, so we're, whereas, where our faith has a value that's worthy of eternal life. You know, it's, it's um, the obedience that we talk about here is a passive obedience. It's a, it's a, it's a submission, submission to the truths of the gospel and, and believing the truths of the gospel. So we, you can turn to Acts chapter 15 for a minute and we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll see one last passage that, uh, that speaks to this. Acts chapter 15 starting at verse 6. Now the, the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Salvation by faith alone. Their hearts are purified by, by faith here. So it is a, it's, a, the, the, it's a purification of the heart, meaning, uh, you know, and re referring to the new nature, referring to the, the regeneration that... Um, that we have here. So it's not a, it's not a, an outward act. It's not a, a ritualistic cleansing of, of any sort, but it's, it's faith alone. Obedience to the, to the truth, obedience to the gospel is faith in the gospel. And we need to, we need to always understand that, you know, justification is by faith alone. And, and our faith is not, is not of, of value. Our faith is not meriting anything, but rather our faith is receiving something. It's receiving the, the work of Christ on our behalf that Christ did, did, um, Christ did all of it. That's what justification by faith is. And, and, and again, I think of Luther. Luther, uh, Luther always says, you know, that every week I preach justification by faith to my people because every week they forget it. It's not because that, not because, the, you know, he thought his people were, were dolts and they were stupid and, you know, but, but he understood the, the importance of this doctrine of justification by faith alone, that, that our, it is not faith and works. It's not faith in something that we did, but rather it is, it is faith alone that, that saves us. Faith alone alone that, um, that, that justifies us. And, um, and then, uh, you know, so it, it comes, it's by, it's by, it's faith alone based on the work of Christ alone. So, and that is, uh, 
that is that is the, um, the 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 beautiful thing here is that this 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 passage tells us here that that you know whoever accepts this reality and understands this this faith alone aspect we are that is what that is what makes us part of the of the community of believers faith alone in Christ alone for for salvation that's that's who makes up this this community that we are to 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 love and 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 care for so that's the that's the you know the common christian experience that's why i called it that is is uh, is an understanding and and having our hearts purified by faith alone but now, one thing I do want to I do want to mention is that you know I talked about um, you know obedience being being faith, um, and and, um, and equating those two. But yet we, we do need to understand it is our duty, it is our responsibility to obey the gospel call. The Bible uses that that language um, very clearly. So you know we believe in the doctrines of grace. We believe in a Calvinistic soteriology that, that God, you know, God elects, God gives the gifts of faith and repentance, but yet, you know, that does not leave us without responsibility. We're, we're told very clearly in the Bible, repent and believe. You know, it's, an, it's our, our duty, our responsibility to, to obey that. That's why those verses, the first verses that I read in 1 Peter 4 and 2 Thessalonians 1, they highlight the, the punishment coming upon those who don't obey. If you don't obey... It's, it's punishment. If you obey this, it's, it's eternal life. The, the, the verb that we find in Peter here, it's in, it's in the active voice. You know, we are the ones doing the obeying. Now, this, this sounds Arminian, and, and the, the Calvinistic hairs on your neck are probably standing up, and, 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 and you know, what, what is, where's this guy going um, now that Pastor Butler's gone? No. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's important that we understand this. How we, this morning hour actually in the in the confession study we we looked at the doctrine of saving faith and um, and and prior to that in um, several weeks ago we looked at the effectual call and that really really uh, deals with this um, here. How you know how how does this work? So so first two things we need to understand. Then first is that obedience and 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 faith is not. It's not the instrument that, that does the justifying. Faith is not a force that we, that we wield and, and we somehow justify ourselves, somehow make ourselves you know, pure and, and right. Faith is, um, you know, faith is passive. God, God does the justifying. Christ has done the, has done the work. You know, faith is the channel that receives that gift from, from God. You know, it receives the, the work of Christ on our behalf for our purification. So... Um, you know, we can, we can say, you know, that, that, we, that we obeyed or we, or we believe, but that faith that with, which we obeyed with is a, is a passive faith. It's not credited. It does not have merit, um, you know, to it at all but, uh, in our standing with God. You know, in the confession on the, in the chapter 11 on the justification, it talks about just being justified by faith. And it says, not by imputing faith itself, the act of believing, or any other evangelical obedience to them as their righteousness. So it's important to understand that, as what, what I mentioned earlier. There's no merit to, to our faith. It is passive. But, but, uh, but secondly, and this, this really explains it uh, better, is, is the next line here that it says that they've obeyed, obeying the truth through the Spirit. Now, if you have a King James or a, a New King James Bible, you'll, it, it says that in the Spirit. Um, the, the NASB, ESV, other, other versions exclude that. A bit of a textual variant there. But, but either way, whether that's the original, whether that was added, you know, um, either way, it, it, it's, that is what the rest of the, the Scripture teaches. And that's what we need to understand in order to understand this doctrine here. That the Holy Spirit's regenerating power, it was, you know, it was through, the, through the Holy Spirit that, that we were enabled to believe. We looked at that this morning in detail. You know, so we, we call men to, to, um, you know, to, to obey the gospel, but, but we understand that it's, it's, it's the Holy Spirit that, that regenerates the heart and enables them enables them to believe. That's, um, that's, what, we, that's what we read this morning. The, um, say of saving faith, the, gr the grace of faith, whereby the elect are enabled to believe to the saving of their souls is the work of the Spirit of Christ in their hearts. So the, the elect are enabled so, that, so it's an act of the will whereby we can say we're, we're obeying, but it was, it was prior work of the Holy Spirit in regenerating the heart that enabled man to believe. Prior to regeneration, man would not, could not believe the, the truths of the gospel. You know, so we need, to, we need to understand that. So we can properly say faith is obedience, but knowing that the, the Holy Spirit 
work that obedience in the, in the hearts by changing the hearts. John, uh, John 1, verse 12, explains that, uh, that, that beautifully here. It says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. So we have, we have people receiving him, you know, to, to those who believe in his name, who were born, not of, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So understanding that, that spiritual regeneration that, has to, that, that must precede this. So, so, but again, we need to maintain that balance. It's, it's, we don't, um, don't want to emphasize one over the other to the exclusion of, of, of one. We still call people to repent and believe. People are to, they are to repent and believe, but they have to, they, they, they will come, they realize that, you know, when I repented, when I believed, it was because the Holy Spirit enabled me to. So we don't, we don't wait for the feeling a, a burning in the bosom, a, a, a re regeneration of our heart prior to believing. No, we come, we believe like we're commanded to in the Bible, but we know what, what's happening on, uh, on, on, in, in the heart by the Holy Spirit. So it's, that's, that, again, is such a fundamental understanding to have of the Reformed theology, although as we, we depart into, uh, into error on either side, of the, either side of the spectrum there. So then let's, uh, let's so, so understanding that, then we, uh, we, we move on to the result. What is the, what is the result of this? Unto a sincere love of the brethren. So this is, a, this is a result of this new birth. One of the results, there's many results, but this is the one in the passage here. Uh, uh, the, 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 the purification of the soul results in, in, a, in a love for the, the brethren. It's the, it's the natural result of this one commonality that we now have with, with, uh, with these others who have, who have believed. You know? so it's a, and again, as I mentioned earlier, it's not a, it's not a, a love, love your neighbor, love all men, um, you know, all, all men everywhere as yourself, but rather it is a, it's this, it's this um, he uses a very specific word here um, for, for this, this love, unto a, unto a sincere love of the brethren. Love of the brethren is one word in the Greek. It's the, it's the word Philadelphia. So, um, so the, the word phileo uh, is, is love, and then Adelphoi is, is, is brothers. So we have, we have Philadelphia. We have a brotherly love. It's a, it's a, it's a unique word here used for, this, uh, for this, this Christian community. I think uh, to, to illustrate this, if you've ever been, um, ever been somewhere else in the world, I, I'm not much of a world traveler, but you have it, you know, you, you run into somebody, um, you're, you're somewhere else, and you run into someone who's from the same country as you, and, and then suddenly, suddenly you have this, this, this connection there. It's like, oh, hey, you're, you know, you, you, this is a, these are my people type of, uh, type of thing with this, with this person. And now, you know, so this is what's, this is what's going on on a spiritual level. Peter has addressed them, addressed them in the beginning as pilgrims. You know, they're strangers in, in a, in a, in a, in a hostile world, a different, a different world. They're not citizens of, of this world. They're citizens of another world. That's Paul's language, but, um, but it's the same thing. They're in a strange land. And so the, the brethren are, are your people, you know, and, um, and, and you're, you're united by this common faith in the Savior. So, so, you know, a, a connection with, with, you know, when you're on vacation, a connection with someone from the same country as you, that's a, that's quite a superficial connection, but yet, you know, it, it illustrates that 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 affinity that we have with them, and that how we just how we just feel that. So, you know, so then obviously, how much more of a of an affinity, how of a of a connection should we have for you know for those who are connected in in regards to the spiritual things, the things that that truly matter, our, our salvation, this hope of glory that we have together in glory with our Savior. You know, these these um, you know these, these truths are the things that. That that uh, common truths that we hold dear are the things that connect us um, together as 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 those in Christ. Uh, John Brown he says here, brotherly love originates in the possession of a peculiar mode of thinking and feeling produced in the mind by the Holy Spirit through the knowledge and belief of the Christian truth. So that's what connects us. These these common beliefs, um, you know, and these non-negotiable. Christian truths, and I say non-negotiable because there are there are things we can differ on and still be one in Christ. But excuse me, but things like like uh, what he's emphasizing in the ch in the chapter here, justification by faith alone. These are you know you, you can't you can't negotiate that. Um, you know the the Trinity, the person of Christ. Those these things are so important. Turn to the book of Second John for a, for a minute, a book that um, we probably don't read as much as we should. Second John. <clears throat> To see this emphasis here on this on this uh, this communion of those in the in the in the truth, so Second John he says uh, the elder to the elect lady and her children whom I love in truth and not only I but also all those who have known the truth because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever, grace mercy and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ the Son of the Father in truth 
and love. I rejoiced greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we received commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we, walk, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that, you, that as you have heard from the beginning, that you should walk in it, it referencing their, the truth. So we see that, that um, you know, this love in the truth, this common bond here, fellowship with those in the truth. The rest of the book instructs them on, 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 um, on having this fellowship with, with those who are in the truth and, and, and no fellowship with those who deny the truth, the truth uh, concerning the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this, uh, this, this, this common bond here that, of these things that make us Christian, knowing these, this, these fundamental truths of, of, the, of the Scripture and having this, this common faith in Christ this, and, and, uh, and regenerated heart. So this love that we have to have. Now, Peter quantifies this love. Here, he calls it a sincere love. In the, in the, the Greek is, if you listen, it's, it's an hypocriton, unhypocritical. That's, that's the, the literal um, definition of that, an unhypocritical love for the brethren. This morning, in my, I was reading in, uh, in Ezekiel 33, and God, God is speaking to Ezekiel, and he's saying, you know, these people, they, they love with their, with their mouth only, but their heart is, is for their own glory. And that's that's a that is a, a hypocritical love. So so we're we're called to love with a with an unhypocritical love, a love that you know it does not say one thing to the person's face and then it says it says other things you know about them behind their back. You know a, a, what we would call two faced. You know it doesn't it doesn't act loving and say loving things to their to their face and then slander them when they're when they're not there because they have different theological beliefs and or or go to a different church. You know, it doesn't act one way toward them, um, you know, and, and loving and kind, but then inwardly judging them because they have different Christian liberties than, than you do. You know, but it's, a sincere, it's a, sin, a sincere love because of this common bond that we have in Christ. So then we, uh, that brings us then to the, to the command here that we, that we are to love one another fervently. <clears throat> so, so Peter does something interesting here when he says he says he said that we've been we've been born into a sincere love of the brethren and then we are to love one another fervently and he uses a different word um in the in the original for 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 love what we have translated as love here now a lot of a lot of ink has been spilled over the over the uh the the different words in the greek for 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 love you know there's much has been said about that probably maybe making too much of a, of a distinction there, but there is a, there definitely is a distinction, and I think it's, uh, we can really see that in this passage here. So the, the phileo, this Philadelphia um, uh, love of the brethren, the phileo part of that, the is a very emotional love, and 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 we can see that, right? When we see, when we think of a connection that we would have, um, you know, again, using the you're on you're on vacation in a different country, and, and someone from your own country, there's a it's a it's a you know a, oh this is these are my people, but it's a very emotional um, a, attachment to them, a very emotional um, you know a, a love for that, and it's and it's 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 based on on um, you know on, on truth. But there's, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a, there's an emotion to it. But um, here he uses the word agape. That is, the, that is a, a self-sacrificing love. And that's, the, um, and, and that's a love that takes conscious effort to, you know, to carry out. This, it, it, takes, it takes action. And that's the that's the difference um, here between these two. We have naturally we have this 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 uh, this this, this uh, emotional love for one another because of our common experiences. But but now what do we do with that? We're, he says here you are to to love the brethren in a sa self sacrificial love, a love that takes that takes that takes action. You know. So this is um, you know it's it's. Um, you know, we, we need to we need to do this to, to love here with the self-sacrificing love. First John three eighteen tells us that clearly. Let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. There's a there's a, an action here in our in our that, that we must take to 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 love the brethren. It's intentional. You know, it's it's uh, it's stirring up that that love, doing doing loving acts of of service to others. And, um, you know, this is, 
again, we all, we all express love in, 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 different, in different ways. So, you know, don't feel like there's only, there's only one way that, you know, if you see so-and-so doing this, this loving thing, that that's the only way to do it. No, the, the Bible's clear. We are, we're all gifted in, in different ways, you know. So, so you know, don't, don't feel that the only way you can show love to someone who's, who's sick is to, is to make them a, a you know, a, a, a meal or something like that. You know, if may, maybe you're not a good cook and the, and the loving thing is to not make them a meal, that, uh, that would be more loving. Um, but, um, you know, so, so, so don't feel like, you know, you're, you're an unloving Christian if you can't you know, make a meal for someone who's sick. There's, there's different ways in which, in which you can, you can love, you know, love, love comes in a, in a multitude of ways that, that we can love one another. You know, sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it's just being a listening ear. I think, uh, or I think, um, you know, often that's, we need a listening ear more than we need a pot of soup. Sometimes it's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something that's missing, I think, a, a lot here. You know, uh, an unhypocritical, unhypocritical listening ear to hear people and to, and to sit with them to, and, and to, to, to listen to, their, to their, uh, their problems. Let's turn to, um, turn to Romans 12 for a minute. We can see this, uh, this, the difference of our, of our gifts and how, how we can use them to love others. Romans 12, starting at verse 3. <clears throat> For I say, through the grace given to me and to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given, in, given to us, let us use them let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. If or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Uh, let, let love be with, without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion." So we see that in, in, uh, in, in verse 4, first of all, he says, but for we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So as I said, we don't all have the same gifts. So don't, don't judge our, you know, our, ourselves based on, on, on others and, um, you know, and the gifts that God has given to others. You know? so, but he gives us a very, very clear teaching here of these things. And, you know, so we, we, can, we can look at ourselves. We know how, what is, how has God gifted us? What do, you know, how can we bless, uh, bless others here? You know, whether you know, it's, a, it's, it's you know, the gift of hospitality people have, the gift of, of, of encouragement, the gift of financial giving. That's a gift as well, it says here. Um, you know, so so whatever, whatever it may be, we have to do it with this sacrificial serving, self-sacrificing, serving heart here. Of, and, and that's what we saw in, in verses 9 through, through 13 there. Very, very serving others, you know, doing it, uh, be kindly affectionate to one another. So these acts of kindness, acts of, of service, helping others, giving of your time, your energy, your, your finances, whatever, whatever that may be. But those are all ways in which we are to love the brethren. And, and, and again, specifically towards those who, are, those who are in Christ. There's a special love that we have that we, that we are to carry out to them. And again, this, this is a this is a love that, that we are commanded to love with. It, this this takes this this takes intentional action. You know, it says, "Let us not love in, in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth." So, you know, that is the that is the the. That's the, in, in, that's the secret to a happy life, if you, if, if you will, um, you know, loving God, loving your neighbor, and, and especially the brethren, as we are commanded to there. That's how we, that's how we are, you know, that's our, our purpose on this life, to, you know, to honor, to honor God by doing these things here. So, um, so back to, uh, to 1 Peter again. And as we look at this, uh, this, this love, this self-sacrificing love here, he, he, we, we see that it's a reciprocal love. 
So he says, love, love one another. So we have this, this, uh, this back and forth here. So, so, you know, we don't always want to be the, be the person who just, who takes, 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 you know, it's like, oh, if you need to exercise your love, I'm, I'm over here, you know, you get, you know, you can bless me. That, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to be that, um, that, that, that person who's always taking. The exhortation here is, is to love, is, it's to give of yourself and to, and, um, you know, in whatever, whatever way you can. But, um, this also this also goes the other way. We don't always we, we, we don't always want to be the one who who just who gives 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 and never and never takes. You know, for your fellow Christian to be able to love you, you have to be able to receive um, gifts from them. You have to be willing to to receive that. So you know, and that and that sometimes can be a, a problem in our own in our own lives. Um, you know, as, as being the one who always will always give and will never and will never take. Um, the, the interesting uh, thing when we bought our, our house. Um, in, in Armstrong there, the, the guy that I bought it from gave me a phone number. And he said, this is the phone number for somebody who, who can plow snow on the driveway. And I said, oh, is this a, a neighbor then or something? He's like, no, it's somebody I hire. He's like, the neighbor wants to plow my driveway, but he won't, he won't let me pay him. So then I won't get him to do it. So, so that's, um, you know, we don't want to be like that. We want to be, we want to be willing to receive from others. You know, if they if they want to give us a good gift, we have to be able to receive it. We don't always have to feel like we, you know, we need to pay them something for that. So that's, um, that's something to, to uh, to think about you know it's it's not a it's not a horrible thing but just you know it, it's it's that 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 reciprocal in order for this love to be reciprocal we have to be able to be to be willing to receive from others so um, and again uh, another another thing is to is you know to 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 not to, in in terms of this reciprocalness don't to not be afraid to uh, to open up and to when you know when we're struggling to to find someone to find a, a trustworthy you know brother or sister that you can confide in it it um, you know it doesn't you don't need to it doesn't need to be shouted from the rooftops but yet um, you know you don't need to suffer in silence we just read in, in Romans there that we are to 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 weep with those who weep and to rejoice with those who rejoice well how can we how can we weep with you um, when you're weeping and how can we rejoice with you when you're rejoicing if we don't know anything about you so you know so so that's part of it as well that we need to we open up to one another and um and and share our burdens we we bear each other's burdens we and and um and we and we lift each other up that way and and so fulfill the 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 the, the love of christ paul says so um you know and and um and again this is this is you know we we uh, we always have we always have to qualify things i, I feel but uh, um you know we don't we don't want to this doesn't mean that every every time you 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 know you stub your toe that you email the pastor to start a prayer chain. You know that's not what I'm that's not what I'm saying here. But again, we, like I said, we don't want to we don't want to suffer in silence. We have a body of believers that are, that is there that we've been exhorted to come alongside you and to love you in in this in this particular way. So um, you know so so let's uh, so don't be afraid to to open up. You know and, and hopefully for 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 all of us that we're 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 understanding this unhypocritical love that we are supposed to have so that we don't we're not two-faced about it we don't someone doesn't tell us our problems and then we go and, and spout them off or we whatever it may be um you know with that we need to be like that so that we can all be a uh, someone who that, that that others are comfortable to come to and to uh, and to share our our burdens uh, with, with one another that way <clears throat> so um so the the the, the second the second qualifier then that he gives your first is a, it's this uh, reciprocal love and then we also have a we have a fervent love here uh, to, that we're to love one another fervently so this word here we find it um, it, it means it, there's a, a it's a constancy that we're that that uh, in in acts 12 verse 5 we find peter was peter was kept in prison there but constant same word constant prayer was offered to god for him so we we see that that constancy and again that that comes from this intentional love for the for the brethren they're being intentional about it, being constant about it, and then there's also this uh, this this earnestness, this fervency um, about it. We in in Luke 22 verse 44 it says, and, "And being in agony, Jesus prayed more earnestly." So same word again, this earnestness, fervency. So so the um, the, the the Greek lexicon defines this word as as persevering. So with implication that one does not waver in one's display of interest or devotion. So 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 let let our love be like that not 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 wavering in our interest for one another you know so so caring for them weeping with those who weep rejoice with those who rejoice working for the good of of each other and then and then and also devotion you know devoted to one another devoted to their best to their best interest the best interests of of the brethren 
And then this love here, it comes from, uh, from, a, from a pure heart, he said, or a, a, a purified heart. Um, in the King James, uh, the other, other translations don't have purified in there. But either way, it's, a, it's from the heart. It's a, it's a, it's a genuine, from-the-heart love here. So it's, a, it's something that is, that is natural to, to believers, this, uh, this love. It's, it's something that comes from, from a regenerated, from a purified heart. Yes, we need to, it needs to be encouraged. Yes, we need to, you know, to intentionally act upon that. We always need to, we always need to remember that we, we are to be disciplined Excuse me. In our in our um, in our actions as well, we're dependent on God, but we're disciplined. So we need to we need to to act upon this love intentionally. But it is something that does come naturally to the to the believer. We find that in the book of First John. You can turn there if you like. First John chapter three, verses ten to fifteen. First <clears throat> John three verse ten. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So we see very clearly then this is one of the, 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 the fruits of, of, um, of, a, of a regenerated heart. It's a, 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 in First John, you know, it's a, one of those tests of is my, you know, am, I, am I walking with the Lord? Am I, am I saved? Do I have this love for the brethren? It's an evidence of, of being saved. So, so again, it's not, a, it's not a, you know, you don't need to be, you know, you know gushing all over every, every other believer. But it's a, do we have that affinity? Do we feel this affinity of a, of a, of a you know, this connection to, you know, Oh, they're, these are these are my people. They are they're they're we're, I'm in Christ with them. You know, it's that genuine feeling from the heart of of these are my people, and then again this this genuine desire as well to serve them. You know, so these are the things that come from from a regenerated heart. You know, it's the it's the fruits of that, and that's what Peter goes to next here. Then in in verse uh, in verse twenty three. You're having been born again. That's the that's the um, that's the source of all of this, or the you know that's where it all comes from. So so this this whole responsibility that we have of of uh, of, of brotherly love is 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 it's all it, Peter grounds it all here in our regeneration. That this 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 true love, this true affinity that we have, comes from a regenerated heart. So so he says here, you're you're born again. Not of not of corruptible seed, but but incorruptible. So it's not a natural birth. This is you know this is um, you know your connection to them. It's not natural. You know again remember remember the example of traveling and meeting meeting someone from your own country. You have this connection, but that's because you know because you were you were. You were born in the same country, naturally born. Same thing might be with family members. You know, generally speaking, we have this connection with our with our family members. A certain connection we have there. But again, this connection is based on something perishable, something that is it's only it's only part of this this temporal lower world here. And Peter has been been emphasizing through this whole book or through this whole chapter so far the difference there between between things of this lower world and things of of the heavenly the heavenly places, this eternal hope of glory that we have and understanding understanding where our emphasis is and our focus ought to be. So when it comes to relationships, it's, it's, no, it's no different there. That we have, that, you know, this, this connection we have with family members, with whatever, that's based on natural birth and natural circumstances. You know, but the, but the, the unity that we have as brethren is founded on something so much more. It's founded on something imperishable, in, incorruptible here that he, that he says here, something eternal, and that is our spiritual birth. You know, so by, by spiritual regeneration, as we saw earlier, that we enter into this union with Christ. And that is, uh, as Peter says here, that, came, that comes through, through the word of God. So the, um, and he's, he's speaking here of the, of the, the gospel the, the gospel proclamation. He uses a word in the Greek um, that, that, that's, a, that's a, for, for the word um, the word uh, word, which is normally is logos, here he uses a different word meaning proclamation, uh, which is the gospel, the the the, the gospel of, of our Lord Jesus, the gospel that 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 Paul says in Romans one is the power of God unto salvation. So this this living word of God brings 
brings life, brings, brings eternal life to all who, who believe in, in, the, in this message, in the message of Christ and him crucified. And then Peter quotes um, Isaiah 40 here, verses, verses 6 through 8. He says, All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So, so he's, what's he doing here in the context of, of, this, of this brotherly love? You know, so he's grounding our, our, our love in our regeneration, which, which comes through the preaching of the word and, and of course, the, the, the power of the, of the spirit that he's, uh, he's mentioned here. So he's, he's contrasting, again, the, the temporal with, with the eternal here. So he's, he's, he's quotes Isaiah, because that's exactly what Isaiah is doing in there. So, so in, this, in this context here, this is the, this is the foundation for our, our relationships with the, with the believers here. It's, it's um, you know, temporal, temporal relationships, you know, they, they, they do matter. We see that um, here, you know, he says that the glory of man is, the, is as the, 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 the flower of the grass. So, you know, flowers are, flowers are, are beautiful. Temporal relationships are, are beautiful, things that we can enjoy for sure. But, you know, like a like a, and just like a, like a horticulturist, we, we have to understand, you know, a horticulturist enjoys, enjoys the, 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 the flowers, he cares for them, he, he delights in them, but he knows that they're passing, they're going to, they're, they're, they're going to die, they're, um, you know, they're, they're not, they're not lasting, and that's with, with our temporal relationships are the same thing, they're beautiful things, we can, we're, we're to love each other, but we understand that they are, they are temporal, we don't have that, that spiritual, eternal aspect to those things, but our, our relationships to the brethren are are they, you know they're founded on the gospel of Christ, you know, and then and then and, and they are they are eternal, they are lasting, you know. Then, then you know when when we understand that we understand that that this relationship is is founded on 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 the gospel of Christ, you know. Then then we realize like Paul said to the Galatians, he says there's you know there's there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male or female, but you are all one in Christ. And that's that is our that's our true our true family. That's why we call we call you know one another brother and sister or the, you know the brethren collectively. It's it's a it's our true family. The the grass withers, the flower falls away. You know temporal relationships they won't last into into eternity. They can be beautiful while they last, but they they eventually will end. But there's something different about this relationship to our fellow believers. And that's what, that's what Peter wants us to understand in here, that these are founded on the word of God, which, which, and, which endures forever. And, and you know, through, this, through this word, we are one in Christ. We have that, that unity and that community as the blood-bought people of Christ. So, so, and that is why we have this, this special love for one another. It's a, it's a different love that, uh, that, we, that we enjoy, the brotherly love. So now, just a few words then in, in, uh, in, in, in closing here, um, in, in application, things to, things to think about in light of this, is one, you know, the, the need to, 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 to foster and to maintain fellowship. You know, the Christian life is not, uh, is not a, a journey that we are to go alone. You know, they're... they're um, I think Pastor Butler said it last week. You know, we're not to be maverick Christians. We're to we are part of a community, and we need to we need to exercise that. We need to be we need to place ourselves in that community. You know, so and of course the easiest way is come to church. You know, that is the that's that's where we can and come to church and fellowship as well. Don't uh, you know we, we get get to know people, know how to how to love them, learn about their 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 struggles, the things that they're they're struggling with, the things they're rejoicing over. Um, you know, get to know them. And then, uh, um, you know, so that's the, the, the positive aspect of it. Also, also, as I mentioned earlier, don't suffer in silence. You know, we are, we are a body that is there for one another. So you, are not, you, you don't need to suffer in, in silence. You know, part of, part of this reciprocal love is, is, is receiving love from, from the brethren. So, so you know, don't, um, you know, you, you feel, share your burdens and, and with one another. And we are here to, 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 to love you, to lift you up, to, to bless you in whatever way we can. And then uh, another one, another one I want to, to bring out, and I think this one is, um, this one can hit home maybe a little bit, is, is this is, is, is love, our brotherly love goes beyond church denomination. Um, we have a tendency to do that, in, in, especially in, re, in Reformed 
um, denominations for whatever reason that may be. And I don't, and I don't mean Reformed denominations out there. I, I, mean, I mean, you know, re Reformed Baptists have the same thing as well. I saw, I, I, just a couple weeks ago, I saw again a, a tweet, someone saying, why are Reformed Baptists so, so um, arrogant and unapproachable or something like that? And I just thought, oh, that, that pains me to, to see that because our identity is not Reformed. It's not Reformed Baptist. So our identity is not Calvinistic. You know, we, we, um, we, there's, there's, there's Facebook groups out there, you know, the, the Calvinists, and you know, these things are, these things are good, these things are, 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 are um, can be beneficial for sure, you know, but it's, it's, um, it's, it, it, uh, that, that is not our identity. Our identity is not Reformed Baptist. It's not Calvinistic. Our identity is in Christ, and that is what, that is what we need to understand, and we need to, 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 to really, uh, realize and, and to not not ever make our identity and our group of of, of, of of what we would call brethren those of the same church or the same denomination or or same you know theological persuasions whatever that may be you know being in Christ that is what connects us to to you know it's it's that common bond that we have to all those who are born again all those who have been born again through the living and enduring word of God are, are those who are in Christ and they are our people John Brown um, again, he, he, uh, he says here, there's something inexpressibly awful to a believer's mind in the idea that his Christian affections should be confined within narrower limits than the love of Jesus. So our Christian affections conf confined within narrower limits than the love of Jesus. Pitiably dreary must be the mind of that man who can look around on the, on the, on the wide world and count his dozen or his score, score meaning 20, count his dozen or score whom alone he can salute as brethren or expect to accompany to heaven. Far from me and far from you, my Christian friends, be such self-sufficient bigotry which freezes the fountain of love and keeps the heart cold. So let us uh, let us remember that, brothers and brothers and sisters. We are we are we are in Christ, and, and all those who are in Christ through those the, through the through the the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit, faith in Christ. You know th those are our those are our our people. You know we we have a tendency to look down on others. You know maybe their maybe their system of doctrine you know has has some missing parts and 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 um, you know whatever it may be. And 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 I'll grant it to you, the Reformed Baptist. Um, hermeneutic and, and doctrinal system is it's glorious we it's 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 amazing it's great and i think that's why we you know we we we, we love it so much but um you know that i think sometimes those who people that we have a tendency to look down on because they they don't have quite the same you know well well structured and organized and and system you know those people can often be uh, uh better examples of this unhypocritical love um for one another than sometimes we 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 might uh, have a tendency to to be so let us uh, let us let us remember that there and the same thing goes for christian liberty as well not just not just uh, you know our our doctrinal standards but our our christian liberties um you know Whatever it may be, if you if you're convinced that you need to homeschool your children, but um, but you know you do you, do you those who, who send their kids to public school are they a little bit different? Um, you know that you're not quite as willing to exercise this same love uh, for for them as you would for you know for for another homeschooling family, for example. Uh, drinking alcohol is another prime example. You know, do we do we look down on those people, or do they do they not quite fall in the same you know? group of people that we would consider brethren is there something different you know different about that no we 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 need this unhypocritical love for those who are those who are who are our our who are in Christ there so you know is is our love unhypocritical you know is it is it from the heart you know do we do we um, you know, do we do we look, do we act loving towards someone, but you know we're we're looking down on them a little bit. We're, we're doing it because we feel we need to, but we look down on them because their you know their 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 doctrinal system is a little different, or their Christian liberties are a little different. Um, you know, whatever whatever it may be. In First Corinthians eight verse twelve, the context there being Christian liberties, he says, "When you thus sin against the brethren, this is by looking down down on, on others with different liberties. When you thus sin against the brethren, you sin against Christ." You know, so let us uh, let us remember that. So so you know, can 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 this can this be said of you that Jesus said, "By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another." John thirteen thirty four. So.
And then just in, in closing, I want to I wanna look at, that, at the, last, uh, the last sentence that I never, uh, I never read here. Now, this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. So, the, so, so preached, preached by the gospel, one word in the Greek, uh, evangelized is, is sort of a, a word, gospelized. You know? So, so this, this word, this is what the word that was given to you here. For one, this is an encouragement. We have, you know, we, this, this living, enduring word of God, the truth contained in there, you know, that's the, that's the, the very word by which we were saved. It's the foundation for, for our, our faith in Christ and, our, and our, our hope in Him. You know, our salvation is secure because of the, because of the, the, the glorious truths contained in this, in this word that was, that, was, that was gospelized to us. You know, but it also comes as a warning and actually quite a, a very serious warning. Here, it's the, you know, this word was, was preached to you. What did you do with that word? Were you, were you obedient to that word? Do you, did you submit to the truth of it? Submit in, in obedience to, to Christ as Lord, to, to, to faith in him as, as your savior. You know, one of the most frightening verses in all of the Bible is, uh, is where Jesus speaking to Chorazin and Bethsaida. And he says to them, he says to them, it's going to be more tolerable in the day of judgment for Sodom and Gomorrah than then for you, Chorazin and Bethsaida. Why? It was because they had the mighty works of God done among them. Here we have the mighty word of God preached among us. You know, what did you do with that? If you reject that, it is going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah. We saw what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. We see it in, our, in, in the Bible, what happened to them, you know, uh, in an outward sense with the city how wicked they were. They were all destroyed in, in, a, in such a fiery manner. But that was, only, that was only temporal. What about the spiritual aspect of, of, of them and their sin? You know, but it's, it's going to be more tolerable for them than for those who have heard the word of the, of the Lord preached and, and still reject that, still disobey it, still, still turn from it. So, 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 so believe then. That's, the, that's what, um, you know, Come to Christ, trust in Him for your salvation. Not that, not that you, so that your salvation. We looked at that this morning. What is faith? It's, it's, it's either my, my works gain entrance into heaven, or it's Christ's works for me that gain entrance into heaven. If you trust in that Christ work for you, that is faith. That is what we. That is so. Believe in Him, and then you enter into that blessed union with Christ and a, and that blessed fellowship with uh, with the brethren. So let us uh, let us close in prayer. <clears throat> Well, Lord, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for this passage of scripture. And Lord, these things that, that, that we all need encouragement in, in our lives to, to love the brethren. And Lord, I just thank you for, for these exhortations. I pray that, that we would take these things to heart, that, that, we, would, that we would seek to live uh, lives of, of, of love for one another and, and building each other up and and, and helping each other, weeping with those who weep, rejoicing with those who rejoice. So, Lord, I pray that you, that you help us with these things. We know our Lord Jesus says, apart from, from you, we can do nothing. So, Lord, we look to you for that, and we pray for that. And, Lord, I do pray, again, that if there are any here who have not, who have not come to Christ in, and, 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 and entered that union with Christ and that fellowship of the believers that we have together, being together in Christ, Lord, that they would, that they would come, that they would trust in the Lord Jesus. As, 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 as the, the hymn writer says, nothing in my hand I bring simply to thy cross I cling. Lord, that's all we need is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ on our behalf. So I pray that you would be pleased to bless us now. I pray that you, that, that you go with us and in, the, in the, the remainder of this day. Bring us back together this evening, Lord, if it's in your will to celebrate the, the Lord's death together and, and, and to look at what that means for us as your people. Lord, I pray that you be honored and glorified in all that we do. And we pray this in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, you can, uh, you can turn uh, to the doxology, 568, I believe it is. Um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, five, 568, and, then, and uh, stand and sing in closing, please. Thank you.
Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you can be seated for a time of meditation. Thank you.